Lewis Holder is among us. I invite him to come here with me to bear witness as a new Muslim among us. That is a nice and beautiful addition in us and we warmly welcome him today. Please, with loud salawat, welcome him. Except Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluh. Wa, wa rasuluh. I witness. I witness. That. That. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad. Is. Is. His servant. Is his servant. His messenger. His messenger. And seal of the prophets. And seal of the prophets. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashadu anna anna amir al mu'minina amir al mu'minina wa wa awladahul wa awladahu ma'asumina ma'asumina hujjatullah hujjatullah I witness I witness that that Imam Ali Imam Ali then then Abi Talib Abi Talib alayhi salam alayhi salam and, and his, his eleven, eleven infallible, infallible sons, sons are uh, divine leaders, divine leaders, and our imams, and our imams. <laughs> we congratulate you uh, to come in Islam. We welcome you. And inshallah, this journey, this new journey and new life will be good for us, for Islam, for you and for all of the Muslims around the world. Now I will request you, uh, if you would like to share us, how did you start your journey towards Islam? Lord Salaam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa I first um, started the journey to Islam when, when I had um, Muslim friends like about nearly a year ago and I wanted to learn more about them so I thought I decided to maybe read the English translation of the Quran and then uh, I started reading it, you know, I felt like inspired by the verses etc and then uh, because you got all these um, people that have lack of understanding about Islam, like saying that it's a re evil religion, it's a violent religion, but they've got no true understanding about the religion and they need to, to ask um, uh, the Muslim brothers and sisters about Islam. So I thought, you know, I, would, I thought to myself I would have a proper understanding about Islam and research it deeply. So, you know, first of all, of course, uh, because of uh, the, how large the sect is, I started studying about Sunni Islam. I started stu studying about that version of Islam for a while at first, but, and then I uh, met some uh, Shia brothers and sisters um, on Facebook, and I started asking them questions, what's the difference between Sunni and, um, Sunni and Shia? So, and I was wondering why, uh, uh, why uh, they, uh, they believe that they elected um, Abu Bakr like in, in the version of Shura when in the Quran, as I was studying it, that there is a uh, nowhere in the Quran where um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed uh, his people to elect a leader because 
previous prophets, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them instruction to choose a leader, for example, Moses for Harun, and then uh, Ibrahim for the progeny, the ones that are just, not unjust, and many other prophets also. There's not, and I believe that there's not been a single prophet of God that uh, that has been allowed his people to elect the leader. So I thought to myself, why, why do um, Sunnis believe in the election of Shura when it's not in the Quran itself or any of the prophets' teachings? Except um, you might find a verse of Shura to do with the Battle of Uhud, but it's not to do with the election of a leader. Then I, then I thought to myself, why don't the Sunnis believe in the Twelve Imams? Because it says in Sahih al-Bukhari that, um, that um, the Prophet, and many other books, that the Prophet said that there will be twelve um, successors after him. So that, that raised a lot of questions to myself at first. And then um, I started doing a bit of research, and a lot of things didn't make sense to me about Sunni Islam, so I thought I asked a lot more questions. And I, I met um, an individual from um, Slough by the name of Said Ali, he's a very knowledgeable individual. I asked him a lot of questions about Shia Islam. Because uh, at, at this time there was a lot of Sunni brothers and sisters spreading like fabrications and misconceptions about Shia Islam. I'm sure you've heard of them that we believe, but in different Quran and other things, you know. And I, and I was wondering to myself, because I've never seen this from a sheer individual, why would they lie about an indi or another individual's faith? Why wouldn't they be proud of their own faith? So, I thought to myself that after doing a lot of studying that Shia Islam and the belief of the 12 Imams um, are the, our leaders, our masters, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad. 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 Muhamm
like Sai Sita Bukhari and uh, Maja and Rosso and I studied there some of them. His reference is there, present, about and bed. Prophet have did not leave anybody else except twenty more. So I'm very inspired by your research and you come to conclusion that this is the right path. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say very inspired by what you said. Are you going to uh, think about changing our name? And if you do, I, would, I recommend Hassan. I'm not too sure. I, would, um, I haven't really thought about changing my name yet, so maybe in the future I would. I had a... Sorry, um, welcome and uh, I'm very happy. I think it's the first time in my life that I've witnessed somebody who's converted. And uh, my question is about uh, your upbringing and um, the thought process of anybody who's going to become a Muslim. How can we understand a bit more what goes through a person's mind when they're growing up and they're uh, upbringing? Well, first thing I'm to do with Islam, you know, as I was growing up from the uh, like all these events, you know, these questionable events which have been done by so-called Muslims. So, yeah, of course, there's a lot of questions to raise my mind and I spent a lot of my life with all these misunderstandings. But then, within the last year or so, uh, I thought I would actually think rationally and start asking questions to Muslims themselves about this, about these issues and about their true beliefs. Yes. Around the globe. 